Raquel has just knocked off Raquel and Shotzi. Good fucking God, that line from Michael Cole is right up there with Vince McMahon's 1996 Rumble. And here we see Yokozuna being dumped unceremoniously out of the ring by Yokozuna. I know that Michael Cole's been with the company for 25 fucking years and doesn't feel a day over 60. Seriously, it feels like he's been there forever, forever, and a day that's never. And he's been on commentary for over 20 fucking years. And he has had Vince's parasitic-like voice in his goddamn ears. Say it right, pal. Say it right, pal. Ha 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 ha. Cole probably still hears that laughter in his sleep. Look, I get it. I get that having an old man screaming in your goddamn ears couldn't have been easy to deal with. And Michael Cole was never that good on commentary, or at least hasn't been for the last 15 fucking years. But this is proof, even with Vince McMahon's voice out of his goddamn ears, he's still really fucking bad at his job. Does not need to be on commentary anymore. Bring in some fresh blood. Bring in somebody that can do something good. Unfortunately, Michael Cole's call here and the other bad shit he did is nothing compared to the fact that Triple H made a call to bring another talent back. A guy that had one of the worst matches that I've seen all year against Davey Boy Smith Jr. on uh, Ric Flair's last match event. Yeah, brought back Cross and is thrusting him into the main event. Triple H's Kool-Aid drinkers. Boy, I wonder what you're thinking right now. I wonder if that goodwill has fucking evaporated. Maybe he poisoned it like Jim Jones. People play games, my friend, if you'll see what I did there. Boy, Clash at the Castle's already not looking all that great if they're going to put Cross in the fucking main event. Ooh, I'm John Rickham with my review, WWE SmackDown. That was a long goddamn intro. This show wasn't all that great. There were a couple moments that were fine, but it was mostly phoned in. Look, I met Cross at an indie show about three years ago. Nice guy. He's talented. But if you just ignore the fact that he's a QAnon fucker and that he believes all that bullshit and everything, and anybody that believes that bullshit's a fucking moron, unfortunately, there are a lot of people in wrestling like that. The guy just wasn't, he just didn't have that draw. Like, he was good enough in the ring, but people punked him out in NXT on the goddamn mic. And when he was released, yeah, some people were like, okay, well, Miss Scarlet, Miss Scarlet, Miss Scarlet, I didn't realize you brought back the hourglass. <sighs> Cross just is, <laughs> that's the best you can fucking do. Let's bring him back. Who's next, Strowman? Oh, fuck, I just goddamn cursed it. They're going to put Cross against Drew against Roman at Clash at the Castle. His NXT title run was not very fucking good, either of them. He separated his shoulder in the first one, and this, and I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but really? Fucking really? Goddamn, Triple H. I mean, I know you wanted to bring back a whole bunch of people that Vince McMahon cut, but you could you could have cut the goddamn Viking Raiders. I mean, nobody really would have missed them. <clears throat> there are certain people he should bring back. There are certain people he should not even pick up the phone for. Yes, there's an open line of communication, and granted, Cross and Scarlet couldn't have gone to AEW, considering that some manager there has a case of Scarlet fever. How Don Callis is not in fucking jail for what he reportedly did, I'll never fucking know. But NDA is all around everything, because he's a little bitch that likes to harass women and touch women and assault women, because he's a little ballless bitch. So let's actually talk about the goddamn show, since I've ranted for about the last three and a half goddamn minutes. <clears throat> They're in Greenville, South Carolina. A more electric crowd than, again, old Jim Crocker promotion stomping ground. They had so many SummerSlam recaps. I think this show is at least 25% SummerSlam recaps. The first, like, 10 minutes of it was, like, dominated by SummerSlam recaps. Just to fill time, the Usos drove to Greenville. You better check the road for a bunch of bodies, considering none of them should be driving. Well, which one is it that doesn't have his license? Is it the one married to Naomi? Probably. <laughs> um, and Pat does pitch us to a replay of uh, when he kicked Corbin in the balls. More SummerSlam recaps. Good, we fucking needed that. And then Corbin shows up. Well, backstage, and he threatens the locker room while wearing that shirt. Hate to say it, Corbin, but if you made better wardrobe choices, you probably wouldn't be laughed at so much. And then Ricochet is going to challenge him because Corbin wants to wipe that smile off his face. They had a decent enough match, but are they going to continue the Corbin-McAfee feud? Because it's a whole bum-ass Corbin thing. Somebody suggested they might become an unlikely tag team. Unlikely tag teams rarely fucking work, especially... Whether it's Vince booking, whether it's Triple H booking, the unlikely tag team thing is an old trope, an old cliche, whatever, that does not need to be fucking utilized all that often. Huge back body drop, going back to Vince McMahon's commentary and a rack bomb variation. And sure, Pat does a distraction and we get a shooting star for three. 
The match is fine. I Ricochet got a pop. It's probably one of the last pops he's going to fucking get in that company. Um, and then they toss the football back and forth, Ricochet and Pat, and then he punts it into the crowd, and a bunch of people will fight over it. Okay, well, Pat signed it, and then he, and then he punted it in there. Zayn wants to talk to the Usos. Well, he talks to the Usos, he wants to talk to Reigns. He wants to congratulate him. And then more SummerSlam recaps. Good, this one was, this show was needing those. It was about Liv and Ronda. Ronda called uh, her loss at SummerSlam a hoax and called Liv a crisis actor, I, I understand. And by the way, I don't really fucking care if Ronda's a good fighter. The fact is she exposed herself as a fucking bigot and a goddamn idiot. Understanding that Alex Jones bullshit, and hopefully Alex Jones gets taken for every goddamn penny that he fucking has for spreading that goddamn fake news, you fucking hack. But yeah, Ronda Rousey, she could stay gone for all I care. She's suspended for a week, apparently, but the pay-per-views in a month. Maybe Michael Cole doesn't understand how a calendar works. I wouldn't be surprised. <clears throat> Pat dances Nakamura's theme and break and classic SmackDown moment. The DX Express... Express, rather, gets blown up. God, if only that happened to Lex Express while Lex was in there. Speaking of, check out my review of the Lex Luger biography that's going to be popping up late Sunday evening, early Monday morning. You want to hear me get upset about somebody? Oh, boy. So, Ludwig Kaiser taking on Nakamura. The Axis power explode again and again and again. Same as it ever was. Gunth Valt, the Valta Gunth. Yells at um, Kaiser, but then eventually, Chin Salsa, as uh, Durbinator once said, one, two, three, there you go. And Kaiser is uh, going to get chopped up like crazy, probably off camera. Kofi says that they will rise back up. Good for them. By the way, they're also trying to make the new Vicious Viking Raiders a thing. I don't know why. Kayla introduces Liv, and she's got a great set of pipes on her. No, seriously, Kayla harkened back to her uh, ring announcer days and did that and live. <clears throat> got booed heavily. I, don't, and, I mean, she got cheered a little bit later, but it was like, oh, you tapped out, you tapped out. Thanks for calling me out on my shit, guys. I don't blame Liv for being upset. She looked a little dejected because she's worked really hard. Is Liv going to be the best ever in the world? No, but she's worked hard and she deserves this. And anyway, so then she's going to sit at ringside. Here's Sonya. She talks to, Pe she badmouths Pierce. And she's going to win the gauntlet match and defeat Liv. And then she beats Aaliyah. This gauntlet match had a bit of talent in it. And it was laborious and bad and was not good television at all. Sonya, who might as well be a manager at this point. I don't think her skills are ever going to get up to snuff. I don't necessarily think she's regressed. I don't think she's improved. And Aaliyah, like Aaliyah, that whole Aaliyah-Lacey Evans thing. Hey, maybe they stopped the whole Lacey Evans, you know. Um, MAGA character, because that's what it fucking was. Maybe they stopped that. Maybe Lacey's going to quit the company. Maybe they just realized this is really bad television. Maybe they realized Aaliyah's not very fucking good. Sonya beats Aaliyah. Raquel comes out, and then Raquel beats her. <clears throat> then Shotzi comes out next, and then after Shotzi gets beat, Michael Cole says the iconic line, Raquel is knocked off Raquel and Shotzi, because Michael Cole, again, is really bad at his job. I need Zaya to kick me in the face like that. Or slap me around. I don't really care. I have issues. She targets a knee. Zaya gets bombed. Then Natty comes out next. Natty gets hit with a bomb. But not before Pat says, ripping the groin to pieces while slapping Raquel. I want that on my tombstone. Don't ask me why. <clears throat> Actually, I want, I want uh, pepperoni, extra sauce, and some cheese on my tombstone. Shana comes out last. This went forever, and I don't mind women's matches getting time. In fact, I encourage them to give the women more time and make sure that they actually get a chance to show their stuff. This match this match wasn't good, regardless of the few talents that were in there. Shayna won. Oh, boy. I like Shayna enough, but why? Like, they've beaten Shayna in the powder. She's going to need about six months of rebuilding, and I don't, think, I don't think she's salvageable. She's talented. She's legit, but really? Then Zayn is upset. The Usos yell at him. One of them does. Probably the one that uh, doesn't have a license. And I'm not going to forget that because you can make one mistake, but you, one mistake, but you keep making them. You have a problem, and you need to be you need to pay for it, like with a punishment, suspension, or being fired. Anyway, oh no, it's going to lead to Zayn and KO teaming up again for fuck's sake against the Usos, and they're going to beat him at Clash at the Castle. 
because that's what we need. Another team that has broken up and gotten back and everything multiple times. Yes, they will win the tag team championships for the first time in WWE. That doesn't matter. I'm just done with this show. Can you tell Tommy Gibson and Jim Mulkey? Because somebody is still upset at Jim Crockett Promotions. Or maybe Dusty Rhodes' uh, <coughs> ghost booked this. They took on the new Vicious Viking Raiders. It was a squash. And Kofi sticked two men at the same time and beat Eric with a roll-up after the break. Of course, Eric was happy to beat out the minority before. Given who Eric is married to, I'm not necessarily fucking shocked. Sarah Rowe can go fuck herself. So, the bloodline makes her entrance. By the way, they're bringing back the Women's Tag Team Championships. Why? Why? Oh, they might bring back Sasha and Naomi. Good. Just make a mid-card title. The Women's Tag Team Championships on the main roster and in NXT are fucking pointless. They're not going to be featured well. The makeshift teams are bad. By the time they, you know, get the synergy going with some teams, they break them up. They broke up Liv and Rhea. They broke up so many other teams. I mean, why are they going to have Nikki Ash and Piper win? No, it's probably going to be EO and Dakota winning. <sighs> Just, God damn it. This, 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 show, this show in general is in the mud. And people say, oh, they need a draft. They need a fucking hard reset. This entire company hit the goddamn reset button. Because Raw was an anomaly. Maybe a one-time thing. It's going to take a lot of time to undo this stuff. There's a rebuilding process, and it's going to take till the Rumble before we really start seeing things. It's probably going to take till after next year's Mania to really start to see the changes. One is firing Kevin Dunn. Apparently, they're not going to do that, at least not yet. So, Roman makes it out. Well, the Bloodline makes their entrance. And then we get a Gunther hype package with nine minutes left. <clears throat> Roman addresses Drew and Clash at the Castle, talks about Bork, talks about the wise man not being here. And then Drew shows up and says the tribal queef. No, I did not hack Drew's brain. Stop accusing me of that. And he's going he's gonna to beat up the bloodline. But then suddenly the music hits and Scarlet shows up and then Cross with hair, which looks ridiculous, attacks him, fists him from behind, and Scarlet has her hourglass and also the hourglass in her hand. <coughs> And if they have Cross beat Roman and Drew, you might as well just throw the goddamn titles away. I, that, it came and gone with him. I don't think this is a good signing. I'm not saying you shouldn't give other people chances. You shouldn't give people second chances. But this is this is going to blow up in their fucking face. Yeah, that was really, really bad. That was not a good episode. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rentland. I'll see you soon.